We'll talk about this piece from Alan Rusbridger. He is the editor-in-chief of the Guardian paper. This, of course, is uh, the British paper which uh, was instrumental in um, publishing Edward Snowden's leaks. Um, yesterday, the day after David Miranda, Glenn Greenwald's partner, was detained in Heathrow Airport, um, he addressed this det uh, detention. Now, I want to say, like, you know, I saw a piece in Daily Kos, some diarist, I don't know who wrote it, saying that uh, Glenn Greenwald's blowing this all out of proportion. You had David Miranda, who was traveling with stolen documents, illegally traveling with stolen documents. He's not uh, a... He's not a uh, journalist. Well, he's clearly working. Uh, he may or may not be a journalist, but he's clearly working on a journalistic project, right? I mean, he is working in service of journalists. If he was, in fact, bringing documents from Laura Portress uh, to Glenn Greenwald, he was engaging in an activity that is to journalism as typing is to journalism. Uh, in fact, more specifically so. In other words, if he was typing up a Glenn Greenwald's article, he was working in service of, of journalism. And as um, Russ Bridger, that's how you pronounce his name, said, Miranda's professional status is largely irrelevant in these circumstances. Increasingly, the question about who deserves protection should be less, is this a journalist, than is the publication of this material in the public interest? So he addresses this, and apparently the Guardian uh, is supporting legal challenges to his detention and to the confiscation of all of his uh, equipment. But more importantly, Russ Bridger, or more specifically, Russ Bridger, retells what has gone on with his paper uh, in terms of the British government. Understand that in England, they do not have the same, uh, they don't have a First Amendment. They do not have any type of special protections for journalists. Uh, they don't have the same freedom of speech uh, that we have. They have a different concept of libel. There's all sorts of things that make uh, Britain more restrictive than the United States. And in many respects, uh, one could argue, uh, that was also part of, you know, founding of the United States, was to break away from certain traditions we didn't particularly care for that were taking place uh, in England at the time. <laughs> So he writes that uh, two months ago I was contacted by two very senior government officials, or by a very senior government official. Uh, most of this is coming out of uh, 10 Downing. That being the office, uh, the, um, uh, the functional equivalent of the White House uh, for the prime minister there. Uh, they had two meetings basically where they were told, give us the stuff or destroy it. All the Snowden leaks. You've had your fun, now we want the stuff back. <laughs> Apparently is what they said. And at one point during one of these meetings, Russ Bridger asked directly whether the government would move to close down the Guardian's reporting through a legal route. The official confirmed that in the absence of a handover or destruction, this was indeed the government's intention. Prior restraint, we have talked about this, we spoke about this with James Goodell, is nearly impossible in the United States. In other words, you cannot enjoin a newspaper from printing something. It was now explicitly and imminently on the table in the UK, uh, UK. And he explained to the British authorities, look, this stuff is digital. We don't have one printout 
in a shopping cart that if we destroy, it's going to go away. We have copies, and we don't have to do our reporting from here. He said, most of the NSA stories are being reported and edited out of New York, and Greenwald lives in Brazil. Nevertheless, to government GCHQ, the government uh, communications headquarters, security experts, showed up at the Guardian's uh, office. They took uh, the hard drives into the basement of the Guardian, because apparently uh, it makes a real mess when you smash these things. And they smashed them into pieces. It's like they wanted to play out some. It's like they wanted to play out some sort of like movie fantasy. Take it to the basement. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah, it could be that. It could be just that. That was the least messy place to do it. Um, no report on to whether or not uh, they're going to try and market this like some type of Gallagher comedy bit. <laughs> Whitehall was satisfied. He writes and. Russ Bridger says, we will continue to do patient, painstaking reporting on the Snowden documents. We just won't do it in London. The seizure of Miranda's laptop, phones, hard drives, and camera will similarly have no effect on Greenwald's work. Uh, so this is what it's come down to. And we're, we're seeing this government overreach, you missed which in and of itself, I think, makes one of the points of uh, what those who are advocating against the increase in this national security establishment make, which is that they are, in some respects, just simply out of control. You, you missed the second best line that they gave, uh, they gave him. You've had your debate. There's no need to write anymore. Right. <laughs> the debate is over. <laughs> the, Time to wrap it up, chap. The question is, write any more, like, all together or just on this story? Like just, just on this story. <laughs> just, just close up shop or? At this point, it's overkill. The press yes. is over. <laughs> Done. <laughs> People know. They're discussing it. We As get we it. <laughs> Message received. <laughs> Do you continue playing a tennis game after you've won the match? No? Yes. This the debate has expired. It no longer. <laughs> yes. Now you're just getting tiresome. Your story is like bad guests and three-day-old fish. <laughs> <laughs>